This month during Advent, I have asked several wise people in our congregation to share with us the ways in which joy has um, come to them, especially in times of suffering. And this morning, we are so blessed to hear from our very own Charlie Gray. Come on up there, friends. <laughs> Charlie Gray is one of my greatest heroes in life. He is 96 years old, a veteran, and a special artist and dear friend to every single person he ever meets, and especially dear friend to the First Church in Sterling. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> uh, good morning. Robin has asked me to talk a little about joy. Up last Sunday, I didn't know the difference between joy and happiness, but she and Jack enlighten, Zach enlightened me, so maybe I do. So. I know I, he, I, I appear to be a happy person most of the time because I find joy and happiness in my great relationship with people especially people in my church and my family. I love my family, just sitting out there. Ah, I'm here every, every week. I even have my own pew yes. and my own parking spot. Nobody touch it. If I get here early enough, yeah. <laughs> Jarita has given me the joy of being a greeter at the Saturday communion lunch. That makes me very happy. Like most of us, we have had our own share of sadness. We lost loved ones, we have had disappointments. None of us can be joyful all of the time. I personally had terrible things happen to me in my life. Being creative makes me joyful. I like to draw, I like to paint, I like to write, and, and I love to teach. Even as a 12-year-old child, I like to whittle tiny little wooden figures. Some are on the shelf in my home right now. I like to be associated with creative people. And my very good luck allows me to be around 20 to 30 people of various levels of skills every week. Some of these people have even developed into my <clears throat> hug buddies. <laughs> you know who you are. I keep a folder of my writings, and this morning I'd like to share with you one of my stories. While the story is true and takes place during a difficult time. When I read it, it brings me great joy, and I hope it brings joy to you this morning. It's not easy to read this, so bear with me. I'll be able to swell up in the middle of it. I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure of the time, but I'm pretty sure it was around Thanksgiving, 1944. I was in the Navy, I was in um, Italy, and we were on the east coast of Italy delivering aircraft fuel to an air base. <clears throat> and the air base was north of where we were. We were stationed in Bari. About six, soldiers, six of us sailors are working to connect our line to the air base line. The, the air base people were so happy to see us that they invited us to share a Thanksgiving turkey with them. I don't know where they got the turkey, I didn't ask. We got permission from our captain and started walking about a quarter mile through the town, which was badly damaged just a few months before by our bombers. Plus the ground was covered with fresh snow. One of our crew members was of Italian descent, and he spoke a, a little of a language. 
On our way to the base, we came across this poorly dressed woman trying to keep her very young baby warm. My friend, who could speak a little of the language, found out that her house and her husband were lost by our bombing raid months earlier. Without a word, my friend took off his winter watch cap, began passing it around for all of us, including the airmen. And actually, one of the airmen took off his heavy winter jacket and put it over her shoulders and covered the baby. <laughs> See, I told you. That happened to me over 75 years ago, and I can't forget it. 